We're still recovering from that G4 level solar storm that we had just a couple days ago that brought Aurora as far south as Germany and France and uh, Arkansas and New Mexico and Texas and Arizona. Even Southern California got some Aurora. And then as far north as Perth, Australia. So we've had a lot of Aurora show. It's been wonderful, but the, believe it or not, the show isn't over yet. As we take a look at our Earth facing disk, not only do you see that big coronal hole that's sitting around center disk, that's going to be rotating into the Earth strike zone here over the next couple days and could send us some fast solar wind that could bump us up to storm levels. But also, if you take a look on the 24th, right about in the same area that we had that last big eruption, you can see another filament eruption. You see that poof? Yeah, that's a solar storm launching toward Earth. This one, it looks like it's going to go mainly south of Earth, but there is an Earth-directed component. But that's not over because just the day later, right about the same area again, poof, you see yet another solar storm launching. So we have two solar storms that are on their way to Earth. Most of it will go basically south of Earth and not give us nearly the impact that we had from this recent G4 solar storm. However, we are expecting more aurora, and with that fast solar wind, it could get us another decent show. So aurora photographers, better charge your batteries and take a look at your pictures later because more fun is on the way. Now, as we take a look, at our far-sided sun, this is stereo A, and it's looking at the sun just a tiny bit from the side. You can see that big coronal hole in the middle of the sun right there. But really what I want you to look at is to the east limb, because we do get a little bit of a hint, especially in the north. There's a new region that's going to be rotating into Earth view over the next couple days. It does look like it could be a solar storm producer and possibly a big flare player. And that means we're going to keep that solar flux boosted and we could have radio blackouts back on the menu. So amateur radio operators and emergency responders, get ready. That, that uh, radio noise on the bands is definitely going to stay right about the minor noise level over this next week. And we could continue to have some more solar storm possibilities really over the next two weeks. Switching to our solar storm prediction model, Enlil. Now this is NASA's version of the model. And you're looking down at the sun from the North Pole with Earth being off to the right. As we take a look at that model, you can see that solar storm being launched towards Earth. This is the first of two solar storms, but you can tell it's not moving all that quickly. And actually, the bulk of it is moving south of Earth. Nonetheless, it's going to clip Earth right about noon on the 27th, according to the predictions. And then the other storm will also clip us about a day later. But as you take a look, do you see that pinwheel that it's kind of embedded in? You've got these like spiral arms. Well, that is actually the impact from that fast solar wind kind of compressing the slow solar wind ahead of it. And that is actually going to make boost that storm level and actually enhance it a bit. So aurora photographers expect to have another decent chance for aurora starting early on the 27th. And then as it, what the storm actually hits, you could get even a bigger brightening. So keep those batteries charged. It's going to be a potential for another great show. Not like the big solar storm that we had just a few days ago. This one's probably just going to be a minor storm. But nonetheless, we could get more chances for gorgeous sights. For more details on this week's space weather, including how these two new solar storms could affect space traffic and radio comms, come check out my channel or see me at spaceweatherwoman.com.